This is Mike, NoStressMike.com. Uh, uh, my little screen here is upside down, so it's hard for me to keep this thing centered right. Uh, so that's we're going to have visual problems on my. It looks like from now on. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, what I want to talk about is the 22 caliber. Uh, Uh, you need to, uh, everybody talks, well not everybody, but a lot of people talk about the 22 and if it's good, how good, and what it's good for, and all this kind of stuff. Um, to start with, I want to get this out of the way. The 22, uh, 22 caliber in anything in, no, there's no, I don't care what kind of gun you're using your 22 out. I don't care uh, what kind of 22 bullets you're going to be using. I don't care the quality. It makes no difference. None of this makes any difference in this one thing. And that is self defense. Uh, the 22 caliber, the 22 bullet itself, not, not the projectile, but the, the, uh, the brass is not good for self-defense. It is a rim fire. Uh, if you'll notice when uh, 22 goes off it hits the the edge of the bullet. Uh, your your 25s and and everything above that uh, matter of fact a 22 Magnum now it's it's a rim fire uh, but I think all the other bullets are all center fire in other words, you'll see a little point in the middle, and when it goes off, your firing pin strikes that center, the primer, and that's what makes it go off. And that is a much, much more dependable firing uh, mechanism than the rim fire. So uh, when it comes to uh, and when it comes to self-defense, you want to run on a hundred percent. This is what you're looking for. You're not always going to get it, but this is what you want. That's why when you hear me talk about guns, um, and I'm into self-defense. So, uh, like I say, basically everything is self-defense. Every weapon I use is for self-defense. And that's why you don't ever hear me talk uh, very little about a 22. It does not work for self-defense. That room fire will give you a problem. It doesn't fire 100% of the time and on self-defense you want as much as close to 100 percent as you can get and the 22 rimfire is far from 100 percent and uh, the powder this is where the the difference in bullets uh, the cheaper 22's got a dirty it, it burns dirty so in other words you'll get a buildup in your uh, in your firing, as you fire, you'll get a buildup in there, and then it won't it won't function. You're right back to you'll have a misfire, but it won't be because of the rim fire. It'll just be because of the buildup of uh, all the the powder that hasn't been uh, burned up properly. And then uh, another thing is the bullet part of the 22 uh, is not jacketed. So, in other words, it's lead. Now, it might have a wash on there, like a brass wash or some kind of wash they put on them sometimes, too. That's helpful. But uh, it's still going to lead to buildup, lead buildup in the barrel of the, the gun and the firing mechanism because everything is moving. Yeah, if it's, it's semi-automatic, you've got all these moving parts and they're getting buildup of uh, residue left over from the 22. And that uh, will also make you uh, uh, malfunction. So in other words, they need to be clean. Now we're right back to that's the main thing I got against the ARs. They need more maintenance. And so does the 22. The 22 needs more maintenance than most other uh, guns. Now it depends on the type of gun. Some are better than others. But uh, just because it's a 22, it's going to cause 
more nasty residue, nasty stuff inside your gun, so it's going to better chance of malfunction. Okay, that's the only bad part about 22. The good part is it's small. The bullets are small. You can carry, you know, you can carry, you know, 500 rounds. It, you know, uh, you can get a 500 round box of 22s. You can carry them around pretty easy. A whole lot easier than you can most anything else. Anything else in 500 rounds, there's going to be a lot of weight and a lot of volume. So, uh, so there's that advantage. Uh, 22 is easy to shoot. Uh, women and children can use it really good. Uh, 22 is um, um, uh, it's very good for uh, getting something to eat, whether you're shooting rats, squirrels, rabbits, you know this type of stuff. Uh, the 22 bullet itself will travel a long ways, and uh, if you're looking to hurt people, not so much kill, but hurting people, um, a 22 is very good. You can shoot them fast. You can shoot uh, good distances with them. Uh, you just need to make contact with them, and you'll hurt them. But because it's so small, uh, it's not going to do so much damage. But sometimes damage isn't what you're looking for. You're just looking to put the hurt out. I say, I am a counter-terrorist. Um, for years, uh, I would say plus plus 15 years I did lots of counter-terrorist type work I specialized in hostage rescue and um, as far as I know when it comes to specialists uh, like myself people that specialize in in the hurt business um, I was probably about the only one that used uh, a 22. An exception is uh, assassins would use a 22. Uh, but right back to bullet placement. And uh, it's not for self defense. So, uh, in other words, a lot of times when they kill people, they will uh, shoot them with a 22 to kill people. Uh, the 22 bullet is harder to trace than it would be um, any of your other ones. We'll have lands and grooves on the bullets, stuff like that. Uh, the 22, the lands and grooves aren't near so accurate. So it's hard to match a 22, a spent 22 bullet uh, to the gun that shot it. It's hard to do that. Now maybe in the last uh, 10 years, they, the technology might have changed. I like say my thing was in the 80s and 90s is when I was really active and uh, uh, like I say I did use a 22 uh, I've got uh, 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 suppressed 22s the uh, 22s are good for suppressing um, uh, they're easy to suppress And when I was using them for hostage rescue, I used uh, the suppressed 22. Uh, I say a lot of people laughed at me back in those days. You know, everybody. That's when the the automatics, uh, the semi-automatic handguns were getting to be the rage, and the uh, the oh, uh, the was the I don't remember six or or what uh, uh, nine millimeter automatic. Uh, you know, like uh, not rifles, but you know, not a handgun <laughs> like that. I forgot what they are, but anyway, those right there were the rage. And uh, police and counter terrorist units always use those. And here I was running around with, uh, I say, I had my suppressed 22, I had a, a Ruger 1022 that I had modified, specially modified to do uh, my type of work, and um, it was very, very good. Uh, but like I say, none of this was in self-defense. <laughs> so you got to remember, none of this is in self-defense. Um, I cleaned them regularly. I, uh, I didn't drag them through the woods. I didn't go days without cleaning them. Um, most of the time when I knew I was going to be in situations, I had time to go over my 22s. And uh, I say I would uh, make sure they're cleaned up, oiled up, 
and uh, the ammunition is good and fresh and uh, so I took all the steps to minimi minimize the chance of uh, malfunctions. Um, I do think 22s uh, are a good uh, firearm to have um, in the way of a handgun. Uh, if, uh, now I'm talking self-defense. Uh, I see. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, uh, but it's a nine-shot uh, Taurus. Taurus, uh, nine-shot revolver. So, in other words, if uh, you do have a malfunction. When you shoot it, it goes click, you just pull the trigger again, and it'll go to the, the next round. If it's in a semi-automatic, uh, then you'll have a jam, and then, it, then you have to go through a process of getting it all uh, cleaned up and figured out again. So, uh, uh, but like I say, but the, but the revolver, the Taurus 22 9-shot revolver is a, is a good one. You can get different grips. Uh, so you can get a grip that will make it uh, fit your hand properly. As I talk about handguns, a good handgun fits your hand. You don't want to aim. On self-defense, you shouldn't aim. You should be able just to uh, just point and pull. It should be that quick and easy. So uh, uh, you want to uh, stick with a revolver on uh, 22 for self-defense. Uh, lever action 22s uh, is a good gun for, uh, as I say, you you can there's less moving parts, so it's going to be less chance for malfunction. Um, uh, there's there's all different kinds of loading on them. Uh, uh, I say that my 1022 is magazine fed. That was nice. You have to really do your research. And uh, once you find um, the right magazine uh, for the right bullet, and then then you can get more. But you have to try out all the different kinds. I'm talking about the bullets uh, on a 22, just because your 22 semi-automatic doesn't function properly, it's because you have more than likely it's going to be because you have uh, the wrong brand of uh, ammunition. Some brands are hotter than others. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of differences in them. So uh, you need to find the, the type, the brand of uh, 22 that's going to work good in your semi-automatic. Um, I don't know if it makes a, much, that much difference getting a hollow point or not. I don't know. Uh, one thing that, that it does, you need to think on, is they've got some that are birdshot. And uh, the ones that are birdshot is probably really only good for mice and maybe rats, maybe. And we're talking maybe uh, four to six foot away. Snakes, yeah, snakes. Uh, but we're talking about four or six foot range. A uh, 22 uh, birdshot really loses a lot of power real quick. So uh, you need to be able, so you really don't. I can't really think of much use for the birdshot. Uh, uh, I do use blanks in training. I don't know where you'd use blanks other than maybe signaling and stuff like that. But uh, the any any projectile. In bullet placement is the trick. If you put the bullet in the right place, the projectile will do more damage. And it's the same thing with the 22. It's not really a, a, a man stopper. In other words, somebody's attacking you, it's really not going to stop them. They're still going to get to you and they're going to do their damage on you. Now they might die later on even if you pump four or five bullets in them. Uh, but if the bullets are hitting the proper place, then it'll make a difference on uh, how much more they got juice, how much juice they're going to have. And uh, uh, I've got, uh, as a matter of fact, I've got uh, the little dinky revolvers, uh, I think it's North American revolver, and um, people think those are good for self-defense. Uh, I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, it is a revolver, so you know you have less chance for misfire. 
but the, the thing is they're so small uh, they really don't have a whole lot of punch and they're really inaccurate uh, I use mine more as, as a, an Orphus weapon an Orphus weapon is uh, something that you stick in a cavity in the body and that will be like uh, you would uh, stick the little dinky revolver you would stick it in uh, an eye socket in the ear and a nose and a mouth and a belly button uh, up the rectum uh, orifice uh, any holes in the body that's the place where you you do it so in other words you, you know you you, you cram it in a, uh, an orifice and then you pull the trigger that's really what the, those things are, are made and designed to do. Their um, 22 is great for children to learn how to shoot. My kids were shooting before they were five years old. They already know what a, a firearm is. So, I mean, there was no problem with firearms. We had firearms around the house. Uh, they weren't loaded. I mean, there wasn't a round in the chamber. So uh, there wasn't going to be no accident like that. And the, the kids realized what guns were. They already know. They've been shooting, so they know what guns are. So in other words, they, if they really had to use the weapon, uh, like I say, we've been self-employed, and you know, uh, I'm not always around the house for defending the, the family. So uh, that's why I wanted to make sure that the, the children had the abilities to do what they had to do and they knew all they had to do was to pick up this gun and the procedures they knew to load it. And uh, 22 was the, really a great gun uh, for, for learning. And as in any gun, 22 is the same. Uh, you don't do, uh, how do they call them, uh, warning shots. Uh, okay, when you shoot on the ground, the worst, I'll tell you, the worst way to get hit by a bullet is a ricochet because the ricochet the bullet is tumbling and so when it hits you it's going to start ripping you apart when it, when it makes contact uh, so that's why uh, doing warning shots isn't the smart thing to do you shoot it in the ground that'd be good but it might be a rock in that ground and it'll ricochet up and that bullet is going to go somewhere uh, the 22 bullet goes a long ways um, on the carton, I think they said two miles. I don't know if it'll do that, but uh, it will go a long ways. And if it hits anybody, anywhere, they will be hurt. So um, that's why you don't do that. If you shoot it up in the air, you say, well, I'll just shoot it up in the air. Okay, uh, yes, it'll go up in the air, and then it'll lose its velocity, and then it'll, it'll go to nothing. So it won't move anymore at all. But then it's going to start on its way back down. And then once it starts on its way back down, it starts gaining velocity when it starts coming down. So in other words, it could come down and hit somebody on the head or in the shoulders. Or if they're laying down, it can hit them, no telling where. So uh, uh, a warning shot, even with a 22, is not a good idea. 22s, as like I said, it's very easy for women and children to use. But the main thing, not the really the best thing is don't use them for uh, self-defense but it's a good uh, a good firearm for training um, and talking about training and learning any when you're ever you're using uh, semi-automatics uh, you need to watch out because there's going to be the empty that's going to fly out uh, I don't like women using semi-automatics and uh, now I'm sure if they're trained and, and get a lot of experience, it'll change. But in general, what's going to happen is it, a woman, anytime anything gets in their hair, it's, it's like that. And a semi-automatic is going to be throwing out the brass. So if that brass gets in their hair, then boy, they're going to go like that. And when they jerk away, they might shoot and uh, no telling what's going to happen. Another thing, it could get down in the, in the bra and the brass is really really hot and uh, so uh, you really need like I say uh, like a turtleneck uh, and a hat oh glasses uh, that if that uh, empty shell gets in the glasses boy that's it's nasty and that will 
uh, and once uh, a woman or a child gets that empty hot brass gets inside them somewhere or another where it burns them, uh, they're going to get a nasty taste for shooting a weapon. They're going to have a jerk, a flinch. It's going to be really, really bad and dangerous. So, uh, uh, and also make sure that when they're doing ch children and women, make sure they have ear protection when they're practicing. In a combat situation, you're not going to hear the noise so much, so it's not that big of a deal. But for training and learning, the crack of the, of the shot uh, uh, makes them flinch. And so then they'll get in bad habits and they'll be scared of the, the firearm. So uh, make sure they have ear protection. Now, uh, uh, I say the 22 is has its uses, but don't get your faith build up in them that they're going to be that great. Now, uh, if I'm defending a position and uh, I'm using uh, women and children, we're talking about the shit hit the fan kind of situation, uh, I would have them use 22 rifles. And uh, they will have the 22s uh, with uh, the, the safety on. Uh, because they're not really experienced yet, uh, that's why you have the safety. They have to make the conscious decision to take off the safety before they shoot. Under normal conditions, uh, I don't use uh, a, a safety. I use a safety when I'm carrying the weapon around and uh, I have a, a round in the chamber. And most of the time, if I am carrying a gun, uh, there is a round in the chamber. So. Uh, and uh, when it comes to, to rifles, it's always better if you're going to carry around the chamber to have the safety on. But I say if you're holding a position uh, and all the trouble's coming, you can see all this stuff, I, I usually make sure I, I make sure I have around the chamber. That's why I don't like taking the rounds out of the chamber because I'll forget to put one back in. So normally I have a round in the chamber all the time. But um, you want to make sure before the situation, as the situation's arising, you need to make sure you do have a round the chamber and you have the safety off. Because once the shit hits, you won't have time to flick any safeties and stuff. You're going to be scared, you're going to be confused, it's going to be hard to hit that safety. It's, it's remarkable how, how everything happens so fast. And if you've seen my video on uh, uh, how to do combat shooting and uh, combat type warfare, you will understand why. Everything is done in seconds and uh, uh, parts of a second. So that's why you don't have time for safeties. But like I say, seldom will I use women and children in a position of firing. I mean, the reason I'm in the position in the first place is to guarantee the safety of the children and the women. That's why I don't normally have them in a position of uh, combat. I don't hide them from it because they need to see the realities of combat. Uh, and it's better if they see it and understand it than once it's thrown on you and then you'll end up being scared and panic and you make bad decisions. So that's why I, I don't hide the fact of violence. I just want them to understand how it works. This is Mike, no stress Mike.com. <laughs>